Howdy, folks. It's the Creepy Kentucky and here with you again from DeadPit.com. We have a really cool one to look at today on the review from our good friends over at Kino Lorber. This one is a part of their Kino Lorber Studio Classics line from 1972. Goes back over 50 years. Recently had its 50 year anniversary with this brand new edition here from Kino Lorber Studios, the Az Fix. And a lot of you are probably like, what in the hell is an Az Fix? Well, tune into this review and you will find out exactly what that is. Now, this is a movie that I was not familiar with at all. It's a British Gothic horror movie from the early 70s, so a little bit before my time, folks. I'm kind of old, but I'm not that old. Was the only film directed by the director, Peter Newbrook, who has done a lot of other things in cinema, but just not filmmaking, not directing. This was it for him. This one stars the Roberts, Robert Stevens and Robert Powell. And we're going to talk about it today because this is a pretty cool addition for a movie that surprised me quite a bit. I had never seen it until now and I was excited to check it out. Let's take a look at the as fix. This one stars Robert Stevens as the lead character, Hugo. He is a photographer, an inventor, genius of that era in 1800s England. And his specialty is the photography of the dead. And with this newly acquired moving picture camera, which would later be known as just film camera, Hugo begins to film and notices a strange apparition around those who have recently passed away. Upon further investigation, he comes to the theory that this is the Asphyx, which is a spirit of the dead that captures the soul of the passing person. And Robert Powell is in this as Giles Cunningham, who is the assistant to Hugo. They both come to the conclusion that they can capture this Asphyx, thus making the person who was getting ready to pass away as immortal. And it kind of goes from there without giving a whole lot of it away. It's a very inventive story and it's a very well done movie. I was actually kind of shocked at how much I liked this movie and was kind of drawn to it from the first minute of the movie. You know, the opening segment to the movie is modern times and it brief, it's briefly like in the modern, you know, 1970s and immediately after the credits goes to the 1800s, right? So you don't know what in the hell was going on with that, but you learn towards the end of the movie. This one has some really great special effects sequences as well with the as fix. And for the early 70s, you're like, wow, I mean, these still actually look pretty decent. Not really sure how they did those. But yeah, this is a different sort of gothic horror movie from that era. Um, I don't know if it kind of got lost amongst all the other stuff that was coming out at the time. It's a very British horror film, but I really enjoyed this movie. This was one of the, every once in a while we get some of these to review. This is one where I was like, I don't know what this is. This sounds kind of interesting. And it completely blew me away when I put it on and started watching it. So. This is one that you'll definitely want to add to the collection. It's a high recommendation for me. And this is a pretty sweet edition as well. I think they had come out with a separate Blu-ray of this a few years ago. In the United States, there's a 99-minute cut. And there is the remastered cut, which was in England. It's like 86 minutes. So the English one is the only one that they had a remaster on in HD. If you watch the 99-minute cut, there is definitely degrading picture quality in those 13-minute scenes that are added on in the movie. There's also an audio commentary included on this with novelist critic Kim Newman and writer and editor Stephen Jones. These guys know way too much about British cinema in general, and you will get lost listening to them. But it is interesting. Those guys definitely know what they're talking about. Um, this edition here from Kino has the slip cover with the exact same artwork on the inside. 
and just a disc. It's a no frills. You know, you get great transfers and some cool extras and everything with Kino. But to keep the cost down, they really don't do a whole lot of extras, which I enjoy. To me, it's all about the movie. But some of you guys enjoy extras too. So this one, the Asfix, again, high recommendation for me, guys. I would recommend anybody go and check this out, even if you're not a fan of this era of film or gothic horror or whatever. This is a different one. This is definitely one that you'll want to pick up and check out and check us out. We're over at Dead Pit. Dot com. Give us the thumbs up. Up you butt. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a f if you do. Or I don't. want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Let's keep our community growing here on no, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you yeah. dare do it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And <laughs> click that bell. Hey, everyone. It's Oak Early Jaws. We got some great shirts for you. We got Faces of Death Part 2. We got creepy stories to tell in Kentucky. The Colonel would approve. We also got DeadPit.com. We got DeadPit Radio with the little fucking DeadPit dude on there. We got It Never Ends, a Halloween spoof parody of the new movie. We got It at Night. We got The Rat Pack, Uncle Rat himself. It just gets better and better. So go on and get you some shirts over at Team Public. It just gets better and better, boss. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started only one by one.